back to the channel. For today's video, we're going to resume where we left off disassembling the car. Now we need to remove the main body or bucket of the car. To do this, we have six body mounting bolts located in the middle of the tub here on the three cross members. Then we also have the components that go through the firewall. There's really only a few, the choke cable linkage, the steering column, the throttle, and spark levers. They all go through the firewall, so we'll need to disconnect those and pull them through, remove the six mounting bolts, and this tub should be loose and ready to come off. So, let's get to work. The mounting bolts are ordered in three rows of two each. The front two are on a bracket on each side of the transmission. These bolts were pretty easy because they were hex bolts and they're in an easy location, so I was able to get a wrench on each side of them and loosen them up. The next two are right in front of the seat. These are carriage bolts that are supposed to seat down inside of the floor right there. They are not wanting to come loose because the carriage bolt is just spinning and not seating properly in its square groove. Um, so we're going to have to drill those out and I'll show you how I'm going to do that here in a minute. And then the rear two are located underneath that lip and it's pretty heavily rusted under there because all the water caught in the rear part of the seat and just kind of sat down there. So they were a bit difficult to remove but they were hex bolts so I could get each side of the, the bolt. So it wasn't terribly difficult because of that. These two are being more of a pain though because they are carriage bolts and I can't grab the top of them to loosen the nut. So we're going to have to drill them out and I'm going to show you how to do that. Here we are at one of the body mounting bolts on the driver's side that's been giving me a lot of trouble. If I spin the bottom of it with a socket, you can see the top of the bolt just turns. That's because there's nothing holding it there because the inside square that it's supposed to seat in has just been rounded out from the metal being soft and rusted and losing tension with the wood block that's inside of here. So the only way to get this bolt out is going to be to cut it off and the easiest way to do that is just to drill it out from the top. So to do that, you first have to start with a center punch. It's just a basic punch and you have to punch a small hole in the top of the bolt. That way, the drill bit has something to drill into when you start off, something to guide it. So you got to punch a small hole in the top of the bolt. Then I'm going to start out with a small drill bit, like a quarter of an inch or so diameter. And drill that a little ways so that I have a bigger hole to start out with, with my bigger drill bit, which is roughly a 3 8 inch diameter or so, because that's a pretty big bolt. So we just got to drill through the top of the head, just down into the bolt a little ways so that the head will have very little supporting it. We can knock it off with a chisel and the bottom of the bolt will just fall right out. So let's get started. Well, now we've removed all six of the body mounting bolts. The only thing that still holds this body on is the linkage that comes through the firewall. There is a steering column, the throttle and spark levers, the wiring, and the choke cable. Now, the wiring I'm just going to cut because I will be ordering a complete new wiring harness with authentic style cloth wrapped wires. So it's really not important to hold on to this anymore. I'm just going to cut it and leave everything else there for now. Now the throttle cable is just a linkage that comes from the bottom of the floor pan down to the carburetor on the bottom side of the engine. So that will be really easy to disconnect. And then we have the steering column over here and this is going to be the most difficult. So first I have to remove the steering column and then I can pull out the other two uh, levers, the throttle and spark levers. Those will be pretty easy. With the steering column it looks like I'm looking at the original shop manual and it looks like you're going to have to take apart the nut on the top of the steering wheel and then use a puller, a gear puller, to pull the steering wheel out of the gear system on the inside here. This little box at the top of the steering wheel is a system of gears so that you have some mechanical advantage when you're steering the car. So this is going to have to be pulled out with a gear puller because it's really tight in there, kind of a press fit. So we'll take this nut apart and see how this goes. Well, here's the steering wheel. I noticed that this steering nut was coming off way too easily, and on inspection, you can see that there are no threads on the inside of it. Someone has clearly messed with this in the past and either retorqued this nut way too tightly or just had a lot of trouble getting it off in the first place because the threads inside are completely gone. 
The threads on the shaft that this screws into are actually okay. You can't tell that they've been damaged at all. They look fine. So I think I can just get a new nut and the shaft itself will be okay. The steering wheel itself is in great condition. I don't know what material this outside is. It's some kind of rubber composite or something like that. I gotta look up what material this is. But it's in great shape. It's probably really hard and brittle right now. But it's, there's no cracks anywhere. So I gotta look up on how to refinish this if there's a way to to make this uh, outside grip last better. But it's, it's doing fine right now. There's no cracks or anything in it. So I think that's a great start. So I changed my mind on how I want to pull out the steering shaft. It looks like I didn't have to take off the steering wheel, although it is good that I did because it'll eventually need to come off anyway. So I loosened the bolts on the plate that joins the steering column to the firewall, as well as the bracket that holds the column to the dash. Down here there's one more bracket that's kind of interesting. This is the final bracket that joins the end of the steering column to the pitman arm and the steering linkage. So this is the frame rail and it's a C-shaped piece of iron. So it's open on the inside and it's closed on three sides. This bracket brackets up against the side of it and it needed a block. So they used this wood block to put on the inside of this frame rail to bolt up the bracket against. Now Model T's have a good bit of wood in them and specifically the older cars. The older cars had more wood than this newer model. You know, on the oldest of cars, even the firewall was wood, which doesn't make much sense why it's even called a firewall, but it was a big piece of wood. So Henry Ford has an interesting concept with his wood pieces. There was a lot of wood scrap, and so being a businessman, he wanted to make use of the scrap and decided to start a charcoal company. So he turned all the scrap wood into charcoal, minimizing the losses from his factory. I believe in the early days of his charcoal company it was called Ford Charcoal or something similar to that and they decided to change the name to Kingsford Charcoal which it still bears that name today. So I thought that was interesting being a smart businessman he was able to make use of the wood scrap from his factory and this square block kind of reminded me of the charcoal from his factory. And this block is in amazing condition because it was sitting inside this C bracket here. It's, it didn't get water, it's not rotten or anything. So I'm going to probably reuse this block just because it's an original block. So I thought that was really cool. So let's see if we can get the steering bracket out. Well, here's the steering column. When I was pulling it out, I had forgotten I had to clip the horn wires. This is the horn button right here and the wires run down on the inside of this guard and then they come out of the guard at the bottom here. I had to clip the wires because they run out to a terminal block and then out to the horn which is missing on my car. I had also forgotten that I had to disconnect the throttle linkage. So the, one on, the bar on the right here is the throttle lever and it was hooked up to the throttle cable that runs over to the other side of the engine where the carburetor is. So I had forgotten I had to undo that, it's just a cotter pin and the bar pulls right out of the hole there. So other than that, this came out pretty easily and there is a steering column. So everything else I believe I have disconnected on the firewall. I have cut all the wires that come out of the hole and are connected to the engine. These are just the light wires right here and the wire that goes to the spark box right here, the trembler coils. And then over here we have our fuel line. This comes from the fuel tank that is inside the cowl here. And then right here it is connects to this hose. So I have pulled that connection off. And then you have the choke lever. So right here is a choke lever that runs from the choke knob on the inside of the dash down to the carburetor right here on the lower side of the engine. And this serves both to choke the engine and to adjust the mixture. If you rotate it back and forth, it'll adjust the mixture in the carburetor, and if you pull it in or out, that'll pull the choke lever right here. So I believe that is all the linkage disconnected. Now upon closer inspection, I see that I was missing a few of the mounting bolts. We have two bolts on each side that mount the cowl to the frame. They are right here along this angle bracket. There are two carriage bolts along here that hold the cowl to the frame. So I gotta pull those bolts out and we'll be ready to lift this out. Well there's the cylinder head removed. Now I am very impressed by the condition of these cylinder walls. 
They are really smooth. I've felt all of them and I can't find a single scratch in any of them. They are really amazing. See if we turn the crank here, we can expose these two walls. And there are no Mars at all in any of these walls. Now this cylinder right here has a fair bit of carbonization on it. It must not have been running right last time this engine was on the road. The spark plug wasn't firing right or something was wrong with the cylinder. Because there's a lot of carbonization on this uh, piston right here. So we'll have to fix that. We're going to clean all this up. Get a, get a good brush down on all of these valves, valve seats, the pistons. Get all this cleaned up really good. And see where we go from there. Well, here's the Model T engine. I was able to get it out of the chassis pretty easily. I decided to take off the uh, manifolds on this side and along with that the carburetor that usually goes there and that gave a really nice clean surface to strap. So the balance point on one of these engines is really just about the third cylinder right here because that transmission is really heavy uh, comparatively and all the weight so all the weight is back here. So the, ma the balance point is right about here. Anyway, so I put a strap right here, and that was able to pretty much balance the engine. I also wrapped one down around the hog's head and back up to here as well to kind of give it a little bit more support because that end is a little bit heavier. Um, so that worked great. It was able to pull it straight up and set it back down on this stand that I built. So this has wheels on it so I can roll it around the shop, and then I can have enough room. Well, I think that just about wraps up this episode. I'm working on getting parts so we can start fixing this engine. And in the meantime, I'm going to be cleaning up the engine and getting all the dirt off of it. I'm also going to be working on this frame. For the next episode, we're going to be talking about the frame and running gear of the vehicle. I need to get this frame completely stripped down so it can be sandblasted. We're going to completely sandblast this and put a really good coat of undercoating on it. Um, black paint, something like that. i got to research what is the best product to use. If you have any ideas for that, please let me know. Um, but we're going to be getting this ready, prepped to sandblast it, and be working on the axles and wheel assemblies, the hubs as well. So be sure to stick around for the next video. If you haven't already, subscribe and like this video, and leave a comment if you have any questions, concerns, or just want to share some information. As always, thank you for watching.